let's put the theory into practice and get some cards dealt. John Shipley is our chip leader at the moment. He takes a look at what he has. Like a pair of threes. <laughs> yeah. And he makes a bet. 18,000 to play. A good pocket per Should then for a chip leader. <laughs> okay, so he's bet 18, he's 18, raised at 18,000. So, Charles. Oh. Raise 45,000. Oh, he's come. He's, okay, Dahl's playing his ace queen very aggressively. He's made it 45,000 to play. Even suited connectors being folded here. So, a lot of good cards around this table. Yeah, well, there's, there's already 79,000 you know, in this pot. <laughs> I'm all in. And another ace came. We've got an all in call made. He needs that as well, Robert Cooper. He's all in for th over 300,000 chips here. And he, he stands to pick up, what, 70,000 if everyone folds around him. Yeah, he's playing it very aggressively, which is, you know, which is a thing to do. And he's done it. Shipley folds his pocket threes. Dal's ace queen is gone. And Cooper makes a nice tidy 70 grand without a card being dealt. Well, he's got the sparkle and the twinkle of a new kid on the block. Let's see if he comes undone. Certainly a couple of bad hands in a row, but that's poker for you. We get pocket fours with the barn in seat one. Which he's folded. A lot of players do fold these small pairs up front in an early position. Despite the fact we've already seen it, it would go in favour again, say, say an ace queen unsuited. Yep, yep. A 10-8 of clubs then suited, not, not a, great hand, a great hand, and we see a small raise in that. And more suited cards around the table. The Val fancies some action, such a small raise, he'll want to see a flop and see if there's any hearts on it. Yeah, OK. Right. So John Chipley has, uh, has flopped an open-ended straight draw. Let's see what he does with it. High cards in the flop, of course. The ace coming out as well. Okay, so he's come out betting thirty-five thousand. A strong bet. And of course, a serious bet for someone who, at, at the moment, has absolutely nothing. Well, Jeff's calling. He doesn't think he. I don't know. He doesn't think he's got an ace. I think he's, he's just haven't, he just thinks he hasn't got an ace. He thinks he might be able to outplay him on the turn. Now, a club is a very good card, of course, for Shipley. He's now waiting in just one more to hit his flush. Well, he's got an open-ended straight and a flush draw now, so it's improved his hand massively, and, and he's gone all in. OK, so he's moved all in. It's a very strong move. Uh, he'd even, you know, he'd even fancy his hand against a strong hand like aces up. He's still got, he's still got outs. The Valo, I feel, has a slight read in Shipley. He's definitely going to think about it. It's it's a hard one to bet. It's a hard one to call. Well, he, I don't think he can call. He, he's thinking because he'll be able to pick up a little bit of information off John. He's, you can see him looking out of the corner of his eye at him. He's just picking up the vibes. And he passes. Yeah, he's, he's, he's folded. Well, he had to. He had to. Because no, ultimately hand, he's though. got nothing. Yeah, no, he's got nothing. It's a very good hand. It's a very strong play by John Shipley. Very strong indeed. Uh, interesting hand against two very, very top rank uh, professional poker players. If only I could. <laughs> John Faulkner then in seat three. Quite vociferous tonight. He's, he, he's talking to the crowd, he's talking to the players at the table. He's liking uh, the way the cards are being dealt to him so far. I haven't seen him talking to the crowd once. It's because you're not paying attention, John. You're, you're thinking of the fact that you're not good enough to play at this final table. <laughs> oh. Noah Bouquin will, will be looking. He's expecting some luck soon. And he's got the pocket jacks. He's got to like that. And he's not going to like that. He's going to have to go up against pocket kings. And, and he could get caught badly here. Oh, well, it's just such bad luck. But, yeah, I mean, it's... You know, it's 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 very he's in very very bad shape, and I I, I just feel sorry for Noah because he's a he's a good young player, but he's, I think there's a very good chance he might uh, get into trouble here. Pocket Jack says in the top ten hands you can be dealt into the pocket, and it's only 18 percent against the pocket kings that are currently sitting rather nicely in front of John Shipley, and, and he raises of course. Yeah. Boken's going to call this. He's got absolutely no option with that with a high pocket pair. No, he's moved all in. Okay, so yeah, Shipley raised a hundred thousand and no, immediately moved all in. You may and Shipley have, calls. Yeah, I, I, it's, it's interesting. I think that uh, Noah could have thought about that. If he'd thought about that a little bit longer, he's still got quite a few 
chips left. He could have. He could have laid it down. Of course, one player on end will get all the cards he needs. As Jack, it's actually another ace. Two par for Shepley. And Noah heads back to Amsterdam. Damn, damn. The pocket jacks don't stand up then to the pocket kings. And we're down to five players. And he's entitled to feel unlucky. He just hasn't had the rub. And one of these five players will be winning this leg of the European Poker Tour. And none of them out of it yet. Even Jeff Deval, 180,000 chips. If he doubles three, he can make a serious climb up that chip count table. Yeah, and let's not forget how much they're playing for. I mean, the first prize here is two hundred thousand pounds. I mean, it's hard to it's hard to it's hard to imagine, but it's a it's a hell of a lot of money. Okay, John Shipley's found Ace King of Diamonds, and he's raised. Oh, hello. Oh, Jeff found a pair of queens. This is this is a different. This is a classic poker situation. Ace King versus uh, a big pair. I'm still in shock that John Duffy says it's hard to imagine two hundred and twenty thousand pounds. Spent that last Saturday in Harrods. So the pocket queen's favourite here, but the ace king suited. It's a lottery, really, if he calls this. Well, it's an even, you know, it's a total even money shot, and I think that John John's going to be thinking for a while. He, he's he's going to be pretty certain that he's up against a big pair here. So what he's doing is he's counting how many, how much it's going to cost him, you know. And he's called, he's called it because he knows he's still got chips left. You know, he's still got chips left. It'll take this, you know, it'll take Jeff Deval out if he hits an ace or a king. Let's see if he does. A massive flop, and the first card out is the king. Aye, 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 aye. Oh, and a queen goes out for three at a time. Will it change again? No, it doesn't. <laughs> That's the very ball. popular. That's really popular with the home crowd. I mean, they've gone. You know, they. they you know, this is a really nice result. He's, he's looking a bit happier now. As soon as we said it happens, Deval doubles up. Onwards and upwards for Jeff. Taking a look at this hand, of course, after the flop, Shipley leading because he hits his king and he moves ahead of the pocket queens. But it's a dream turn card for Deval. He hits his trip queens, and as the river comes out, Shipley's hand is as dead as Sunita's pop career. Is there a, a hostility between those players who play online and those people that, that like to see who they're playing against? Is there is there a mistrust? It's not so much a mistrust, but I think that I think that there's. Live poker players tend to look look down for some reason on internet players. I don't know why. Okay, so look here we've got Robert Cooper raising with a seven suited uh, in a in an early position. He's got uh, Shipley looking interested with something. I don't know what his cards were. Did you? Haven't seen them yet. No, uh, John. But Cooper's calling that a seven suited. That's a nice hand. It's a nice small raise. And here we go, it's pocket nine, so it is leading. It's leading significantly at this stage. But again, we should get some serious action here at this table. No matter how cautious they're playing, wow. uh, we got some great cards in the ace queen. Another raise at the table. Okay, so Deval's moved all in. So we had Cooper make a small raise, then Shipley come over, you know, make a, a bigger raise, and now Deval has moved all in. Cooper's passed, and now Shipley's going to make a decision. He's, 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 he's called pretty well throughout this final table so far. Well, he has. He's gonna. He's gonna. What he's thinking about is: Has Jeff got a pair bigger than nines? Obviously. Well, he has every right to believe he does. We've seen so many pocket kings, pocket queens, pocket jacks at this table so far. Yeah, well, I, you know, I think I think he probably, you know, he probably thinks. Okay. Let's, I mean, there's a lot of things going through the mind. It's difficult to know exactly exactly what uh, anybody's got, obviously, but it's not going to it's not going to knock him out of the tournament. So he might want to just take a gamble. And he will be leading pre-flop. The Val will need to hit something if he gets called, or he'll be going home. And the call's made. Shipley leads pre-flop. A very very important five cards here at this final table in London at this leg of the European Poker Tour. Is Deval on his way home? He hasn't far to travel, but he doesn't want to make that journey. Let's see what we've got. Ten of spades, the first card out on the flop. Dealer just setting up the, the overturned cards from both players. And the rest of the flop is as followed. The king of spades would give Deval a straight draw, but he got a flush draw for Shipley as well. The nines are leading. He hits his flush, and Deval might not have far to travel, but make that journey he will as fellow Englishman then John Shetley takes a very very important pot here
Well, Jeff, expect a letter of thank you in the post from John Shepley. He's now our chip leader with four players left. Bardal from Norway, still with a fighting chance. And John Faulkner, what a fairy tale story down to the final four here in London, the European Poker Tour. Robert Cooper, his fellow Englishman, still in as well. And more cards out. Shepley hits ace nine. He's been getting nice cards. And he raises with that. OK, so Bardal is thinking now. OK, so he's gone all in with king nine. Is, that a, is it just me and my amateur position, or is that a strange, strange bet? It's, it's, it's the bet of a desperate man. <laughs> and desperate Bardal is. He needs some chips. John Shipley run away with this at the moment. John Faulkner sitting very well indeed. And we have a caller. Yep, OK, he's called, he's called, and, uh, he's there, you know, Bardal is in not a good shape. He's running well. Shipley leading, of course, with the ace. The queen is no good. The seven is no good. The five's no good. The eight's no good. And the three signals at ace high from Shipley takes Dahl out of this tournament. The bard from Norway. He goes home with over £33,000, but he would have much rather have won this tournament. Instead, we're left with three players, three Englishmen. As for Dahl, it's back to the computer. Back to the action and three players, all, all English at uh, this, the English leg, of course. Some might say ho home turf helps, playing against a lot of player, players that they may play against week in, week out. Is that a factor? Yeah, I think it makes a difference. I think the other thing that makes a difference is you've probably got 80% of the field made up of Englishmen. Well, Shepley's been hitting the cards as chip leader and he's just hit pocket kings and made a raise on that. Not a, not a massive raise, he may lure somebody in and he's done just that. This is a, I mean, this is a... John, John's had some very, very big hands this, in this final, and that's, that's going to help him a great deal, obviously. Well, okay, you know, so, so, well, Cooper's called with five, seven of hearts. And let's have a look at the flop. Well, there's no hearts on it whatsoever, but he has hit a middle pin straight, of course. That six would help him immensely. But it all, I suppose it depends on the betting post-flop here before the turn. If Shipley makes a big raise, he will find it hard to call it, waiting just on that middle pin six. Yeah, OK, so... <laughs> He's checked to Shipley. I'm just thinking as well. If they're all English and home turf helps, how come you're not there? One day. When everyone else is sick. So he's thinking about this. John Shipley, chip leader. He knows he's got a great hand. He'll notice, of course, he's got running cards in the flop. He'll be wary of, of, of there being a straight draw, but he, so, so he checks that. And the six comes out, he, he hits the straight. Shipley, of course, does have the king of clubs looking ahead to the river. Check. He's also got an over pair. Cooper checks the straight. Very interesting hand. He's, he's probably worried about the ten. Unbelievable. Check. Unbelievable. The two clubs give Shipley the flush, and he bets that. And Cooper's even with the low straight, he's probably going to call this. Shipley has hit cards you can only dream of at this final table, but he's also played them very well. I mean, you know, Cooper's called him here, but to be honest, he shouldn't. I, I personally don't think he should have done. He said, he said, I have to see you, but uh, he doesn't have to see him. He must, he must think he's got a club. Well, that's unbelievable. I hear that so many times of professional players. I had to call you to see what you had. Not if you think you're on a bad beat. Look at this, how the hand changes as we go through it. The straight comes on the turn card for Cooper. An over -per for Shipley at that straight, but he hits the flush on the river. Action changed oh, throughout yeah. that entire hand. The chip leader takes it and he's pulling away from these two men. He, he seriously is pulling away at this stage. No, he's, 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 he's on a roll. He's on a real, real roll. There's no doubt about it. He must be feeling very confident now. Every time he looks at these cards, he's expecting to hit something and he does again. King 10 for John Shipley. And he's going to raise that again. OK, yep, yeah, he's raised it 50,000. A great lesson to be learned if you're playing at home here and you're a serious chip leader. He's, he's playing every card, he's, he's raising when he has to raise, even in cards that maybe in a normal situation he might not. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's, play, he's, he's, he's playing, you know, mediocre hands, but they, these are big hands when you're, you're three-handed. Robert Cooper looks as though he's thinking of calling with uh, King-4. 
and he does so too. He gets into the flop and underdog again. Our chip leader is favourite and he would need to hit a four for that to change. He does not do that. There's no hint of a straight on uh, for any of the two guys. No purrs in the table. So it's, it's serious psychology now. Yeah? A bet could take this. Nobody's got anything. Cooper's checked. Shipley's checked. We'll get a turn card. And the ten comes out. Shipley's night gets better and better. He's now sitting on top purr. He's got that king kicker to add into it. Cooper has to check. He's got nothing. And Shipley slow plays that again. The, the eight comes out. He may be worried of a flush, which might mean we're not going to see any more money in this pot. But Shipley's got to bet this again. Cooper checks. He's got the two purr. Will the eight scare him, John? No, I don't think so. I think he's... John Shipley's probably just wondering whether or not he'll call if he makes the bet. 15,000's the bet. 50. 50. There you go. That's why I didn't do too well at Mass at school. It matters not. Shipley takes the hand. The chip leader wins again. I've always gambled for a living. I used to back Greyhounds. Well, you have to put a, a lot of homework into Greyhound racing. There's a lot of work to be done at home, whereas poker, you just turn up and play. There is an adrenaline rush all the way through. You're obviously trying to stay calm and control your emotions and everything else, but underneath the surface, it's all bubbling up. I guess primarily I'm in it for the money. Very honest player in, indeed, and he's doing very well here today. He reached the final table of the World Series of Poker. He's looking to nail this, the European Poker Tour. And we see a King 10 in his hand. He's going to raise again. Maybe not a lot, but he will raise with that chip lead, John. King 10 suited. Faulkner played tight the whole day. He's going to fold that. So we're going to go suited against suited here. Uh, that's, of course, if, if Robert Cooper wants to call it. Oh, no, he's raised. He's gone all in. Ace, Queen of Diamonds. Is he sick of Shipley making this same raise every time pre-flop? Maybe he's, he's reckoning he can't have cards every time he does this, but we know he does. Well, not only that, he's got to make a, you know he's got to make a stand at some point. He's hoping to double up here. This could you know this could this could make a huge difference to him if he doubles up. And of course, a great hand, Ace Queen suited. Well, it is. You know, it needs to improve. Well, well, it doesn't need to improve at this stage, but... Uh, well, it does or it doesn't, John. What, what, what well, you is it? Which it is? Come on, spit it out. It's not, a, it's not like a massive hand. It's, a, it's not a pair. <laughs> well, if we don't see any spades and we don't see King-10, he's going to take it, but there's a lot for Shipley to hit here, as there is for Cooper, just slightly more for him. And this is, the, this is a flop. He's taken the King, of course, Shipley, but he's also hit one of his spades as well. That's no good. Ace or Queen needed. He does not hit it. We're down to two players now. And Robert Cooper goes the way of Duval, of Boken, of McKeever, of Lusk, and of Dahl. But Cooper leaves 59,000 greyhounds richer. Been still there, but that's life, so. Could have, should have, would have. It means nothing. John Faulkner, one of just two players left. 489,000 chips plays. 1,261,000. A double up though for Faulkner, and he's right back in. It would be even Stevens. More cards. A 10 in unsuited. H heads up anyway, though. We'll see what he's going to do with this. Okay, so he just calls. And he will go up against pocket fives. Interesting play by Shipley. He must know he's winning at this point. But he checks that big blind, and we will see a flop. A 10 or an 8 would be wonderful, and he gets it in the first card, so he now moves into the lead, Faulkner. Shipley with the fives, checks it back to the people's champion, John Faulkner. Got further in this tournament than he has in any other. Shipley's behind here. Faulkner, he's guaranteed £117,000. He adds to his stack. He was going to sell his seat for crying out loud. No wonder he's got a smile on his face. Absolutely delighted. First big comp like this. Nobody frightens me. I'm confident in my own ability. Well, I'm a nice type player and I've got patience and I sit and wait. I don't think I overplay some hands when some people do. I've seen it happen that many times. Once I started playing the game, I fell in love with it because I've always played in the pubs, three card brag, that sort of thing. Cards are, I love them. <laughs> it's Faulkner, Shipley, heads up here. And of course, not only 
an enormous amount of money by anyone's standards. Well, probably not not John here, but um, and for these players, uh, certainly 117,000 for second place alone. And Faulkner's stern in that, unless he gets some serious cards and good action. But Shipley's been getting the cards all day, John, and he's done it again. Yeah, okay, so we see him raising here with Ace Jack. Heads up, it's a monster hand. Huge hand, huge hand. It looks to me oh. as though. Oh. He's teasing us, he's only showed us one ace. We get the ace two the camera's picked up, and he's been all in in that, so he, he's not going to go in favourite here, and this could be curtains if Shipley calls it, but he might have him on a fantastic hand because Faulkner's played so tight. Yeah, but he's still going to have to call with the ace jack. It's a very big hand, heads up. Okay. Ah. And Callie does, so Faulkner's all in. Is Shipley on his way to Monte Carlo, courtesy of our own pockets here? At the European Poker Tour, well, he's certainly favourite here. Faulkner's going to want to hit it too. And the ace isn't even any good to him because of the jack kicker. And that won't do it for him. There is the ace. And there's the two! <laughs> the twos came out and the people's champion hits it all in. He's got his two per. No jack in the river and he takes it. Any other card will do. It's not a jack. The five means absolutely nothing. Oh, he's stunned. He's stunned. Look, he's completely stunned. I mean, it's very similar, that hand, to Callahan's hand versus Stevich in Barcelona. Wonderful. The European Poker Tour throws up another wonderful heads-up hand. And Faulkner's ace, too, which has been a lucky hand all day here, gives him two pairs, and he takes that hand. He doubles three. Now, something tells me John Faulkner's got something stronger in that mug of his uh, than coffee. I'll give you evens. It comes with a label Smirnoff in the front of it. And it's, it's game on here now. He's, he, you know, Shipley's just taking a... A bit of a beating. The European Poker Tour then is in its final throws. John Duthie's with me, and you know what it's like to sit around this table with it, with the heart race and two players. A lot of money at stake here, of course. Well, it's, it's incredibly exciting. You have to remain very focused. Shipley okay. again suited. He's hit suited pair after pair after pair in the hand. Yeah, okay, he's got King 3 suited. He's raised it 30,000. Okay, it looks like John Faulkner's going to call. At the moment, only Faulkner knows what's on the other side of those two cards. We'll get a look now. He's re-raised. But you said he should play more aggressive. He, he, maybe we're talking too loud here at the side of this uh, auditorium here at the Gubner Casino in London. But he has raised, indeed, 120,000. Yep, he's raised it up to 120,000. Oh, he's cool. Well, Shipley's 60,000. He won't miss. Wow, this is a very interesting hand. Let's see uh, who the flop favours. We get the Jack 9 4 comes out. Two clubs on board, of course, which Shipley will like. But that's a strong bet from Faulkner. I'm all in. And he's all in from John Shipley. Well, we've seen him make that move uh, you know, before the, with a strong flush draw when he did that move against Jeff Duval earlier in the night. He's only 3 to 1 to hit that. But Faulkner has nothing, so he's, he's got lucky in a way. Faulkner hasn't had a jack or a nine, or he might think of going with that. But it doesn't matter whether he puts him on a pair or puts him on a flush draw, because he's got nothing. No, he can't call, he couldn't call. Very strong play. Classic aggressive heads up play there from John Shipley. It's a, it, just any, any sort of momentum that, that Faulkner had as he was clawing back some of those chips from Shipley. It's kind of fallen by the wayside now, and it's written all over Faulkner's face. He knows he's came further than he could have dreamed, but it has turned into a bit of a nightmare now, and he needs to get the cards. He needs to get in pre-flop, and he needs to double up at least once. No, you, you know you couldn't. You couldn't be. You couldn't say it better. Well, there we go. Pocket jacks. That's what he needed. Okay, he's just called. He's trying to trap him. It's an interesting ploy. Even heads up, Faulkner's willing to take I couldn't that see risk. his hand. He had his thumb in front of it. I don't know what, what cards did he have. Did he see? I think we're looking at King something. Oh, some lord above. Put the caption up so we can see it in our monitor. No, I think it was an ace. 75,000. 75,000. That's a big bet. And he's done it in King, Queen suited. Faulkner will go in as slight favourite. This is either going to end it or this is going to double Faulkner up, but he's got no choice but to call all in, and he gets the support of the crowd, as he has all night here. Shipley has some thinking to do, John. Well, he has, but he's, he's, he's really pot committed. He's bet, he's bet so much money that he, he's, uh, he's almost forced to call a raise. 
and to work out what the uh, what the raise is. Well, it's a room full of Johns here. Duthie beside me, but it's Shipley and Faulkner at the table who we've got to think about. And if John Shipley calls and hits that king or queen, or he hits three spades, then he's going to win the year. He's called it now. He has called it. It is showdown here at the Grosvenor Casino in London on the European Poker Tour. Uh, both these players deserve the win. I'm sorry, you couldn't get any more worthy winners. We see the flop comes out, he hits two spades, he hits the pair of queens. It's Tyson against Bruno and it's all over. John, I'm hyper I love this game. Shipley takes it and he's had so many bad beats at big tables. I have to say, a great player. He finally gets the win he deserves in such a prestigious tournament. Faulkner second place, a much richer man than he was this morning. And all's worked out rather well here in London. Woo! Let's have a look at the final table here then, Mr. Dothy. 200 grand going to John Shipley. And of course, the title of London Leg Champion of the European Poker Tour. We'll see him in Monte Carlo. Well done, John Shipley. It's like I've spent two days suppressing all your emotions and just trying to concentrate and not give anything away and not let anybody know when you're disappointed that, you know, it's very hard to suddenly be. Be jumping up and down. It'll yeah. be tomorrow morning when you wake up. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what are you going to do to celebrate? Uh, Something extravagant, please. Well, apparently I'm off to Monte Carlo hey. with a free ticket. John Shipley! And we'll see you there at Ship Shape for John Shipley. A check for £200,000 from the PokerStars.tv European Poker Tour. On the subject of money, uh, John Duffy, am I getting paid?